we have a few minutes for, for a Q&A here. Any questions from, from the audience? Just wave your hand. <laughs> yes, we have a microphone coming up, I guess. Okay, just say it. Yeah. change your microbes in a positive manner? I mean, you can eat microbiota <laughs> and, and, and you can measure it and sort of you can eat sourdough stuff and, and what have you and you can avoid antibiotics, but what do you do? Yeah, so this is a really good point because we often get this question. Um, a lot of people ask about probiotics and yogurt and other things that are out on the market. And to be completely honest, there's very little scientific evidence for what that does. So what it is is that companies have gone out with a lot of products without doing rigorous background. So right now, I, I think, um, you know, there are no... The hope is that with more science, we could provide foundation to actually find out which microbes do which things and um, suggest maybe a specialized microbiota for the particular person based on genetics and lifestyle. But right now, we really don't know. What time span do you, do you work with here before, before you know something about it? Well, <laughs> to be well, science moves pretty slow, yeah. <laughs> as you know. But um, there are already really interesting things being done. So there's a condition actually um, called a C. difficile infection. You may have heard it's a bacterial infection. Yeah. So that's one condition that people have found that could be treated effectively by replacing the microbiota. Um, um, okay. So Thank others are still, you know, on the horizon. Yeah. But I mean, we'll okay, so I'll, I'll reconnect that. What do you do on your, what do you do yourself? But also, I mean, I know there are, uh, there are like tapeworm implants for people with uh, with uh, Crohn's disease. I mean, there are a lot of experiments being done even with humans. I mean, what do you do, and what what are you gonna have your family to do, and avoid eating antibiotics <laughs> or having them to eat more antibiotics or having them to eat tapeworm? Right. Yeah, I can't say that I have the healthiest diet or anything like that. But um, one thing that people have found that's um, pretty well established is that um, too much antibiotic treatment is bad. So not only does it promote the growth of superorganisms, so organisms that have become really resistant to, bacteria, uh, to antibiotics, but it can also predispose to immune problems um, long term. So I would avoid, um, personally, I avoid taking too many antibiotics or going on and off antibiotics in a really short time span. Um, and just generally, um, I think a healthy diet. Um, so there have been many studies comparing, you know, Western <laughs> diets, so really high-fat diets, um, versus a vegan, vegetarian diets or well-balanced Mediterranean diets, and seeing changes in susceptibility to um, chronic disorders. Okay. So, yeah. thank you. We have <laughs> time for one more question. Question for Elaine. Thank you for a great talk. I was wondering how your results that you showed uh, are comparing to this idea that you mate with someone with the, a different immune system. <laughs> right, yeah. That's actually a really fi interesting finding too. So there's some evidence showing that um, you're, you actually associate with diff individuals that have more diverse immune systems as you. And so I think that might be an ecological um, thing, so an evolutionary trait, where if you associate with other people um, that have different immune susceptibilities, then you might have, you know, as a population, uh, you know, uh, uh, resistant to a wider range of disorders. But um, right now, I really don't know if the microbiota comes into play with that. Okay, thank you. Very short. Daniel, any reflections after listening to, to uh, Elaine and, and Caroline? Oh, well, I, I, well, I'm curious about what, uh, what parts of the, the drive we can take hold of, I guess. <laughs> take, what, Con considering we have the microbiota that are handling stuff, yeah. and then we've got our own brain oscillations that are taking care of a lot, uh, part of the question would be how we can really seize hold of these. And I suppose that's what your yeah. question is also yeah. addressing, something to think about. Yeah. yeah. And Caroline, I was wondering, can you, people feel, doesn't feel uh, the same amount of feelings some people are quite blank and some are very passionate. Could you learn how to, to be passionate? Could you learn how to feel more than you do if, you, if you're quite a blank person? 
<laughs> if you need a tri driving uh, force. Well, of course, the science is always I'm passionate, that but climb. I don't feel that much. It's not well, enough. My feelings are not enough. Can you learn? Of course, you can learn. You can learn many things, and I think that's the whole idea, that you can learn. And from and who you can do you develop. learn to, to feel more? <laughs> from yourself, I would say, yeah. generally. Of course, you get help from your environment, starting when you're a child. If you don't get a mirror to your emotions when you're a child, you will end up having less, and also not as varied the emotion range. Okay. But of course, you can relearn and uh, it takes more or less time. Yeah. But also, of course, you have the scientist here saying maybe we could use something else. But yeah, you can, you can be more emotional and more train emotional. on it. But where your limits are, that's very okay. individual. Thank you so much, all the speakers and the audience. And we'll see you back in 15 minutes. Thanks. <laughs>